After watching other edits, you realize they all have one thing in common. A nice outro. This looks amazing. I want to make one too. So you open After Effects only to realize that you don't know how to make a cool text or background. If only there was someone who could help me. Well, don't worry because today I will show you step by step how you can make this brand new 3D outro to finally stop CapCut editors from stealing your edits. Let's go. The first thing we want to do is make sure we have the right composition size that we also want to use for our edits. Because I usually like to use the square look, I'm going to click onto new composition and select 1080 by 1080. This way you will be able to reuse the outro for all of your edits and you don't have to make it over and over again. The frame rate should also be the same that you use in your edits. And lastly, the duration is up to you. I'm going to go for 10 seconds. Once that's done for the actual outro itself, I want to start by creating the background because that's most important. To make it look nice, I went to YouTube and just searched for cinematic background. As you can see, there's loads of different templates that you can use for your outro. In my case, I like this dark cinematic background by Free Motion Graphics. So I'm going to click on here. You can also preview it to see if you actually like it. And if you do, use it for your outro. You can see I downloaded it on my PC and now I'm just going to drag it into my composition so it actually fills my frame. And when we play ahead, you can see we now have this cinematic background. But because I want my outro to be with these light sparks in the background, I'm actually going to cut this layer after two seconds by pressing Ctrl, Shift and D and then drag this layer to fit with the beginning of my composition right here. I also want my outro to be only five seconds long. So I'm going to go to five seconds right here and again, cut the layer by pressing Ctrl, Shift and D. Delete everything that comes past here and now we can actually start editing. The first effect I'm going to add is called Deep Glow and it will help us add some glow and make the outro seem a bit brighter. So go to effects and presets, search for Deep Glow. If you can't find this effect inside of your After Effects, join my Discord server in the description and then drag it onto your footage layer right here. For the settings, I'm going to put the radius from 500 down to 100 and the exposure from 1 down to 0.1. The second effect is very specific to my background because you can see we have these very dark edges, which I don't really like. I want to make them a bit brighter. So I'm going to go to effects and presets and search for BCC vignette. Again, if you can't find it, join my Discord server. Then I'm also going to drag this onto my background layer. And instead of the settings, I'm going to start by putting the radius from 26 up to 30. Then I'm going to click onto the vignette color and put it to a brighter gray, something like this. Lastly, I'm going to put the softness from 100 up to 250, which as you can see, will make the edges a lot brighter. Next, I'm going to search for brightness and contrast. Select the normal one and drag it onto your footage layer. Put the contrast from 0 to 30. And the most important part, because you probably don't want your outro to be fucking orange, is going to be changing the color. And the way I'm going to do this is pretty simple. I'm going to go to effects and presets and search for the tint effect. Again, select the normal one and drag it onto your footage layer. If you want your outro to be black and white, you can just leave the standard settings, but I want to go for a bright blue. So I'm going to select the map Y2, click onto this box and set it to a bright blue or whatever color you want to use for your outro. Now, when we play ahead and we look at the before and after, it should already look a lot better, but we're still not done yet. The next thing I want to do to our background is add an additional layer with some more particles that are flying around. And to do that, I'm going to go to layer, new, and then select solid layer. The color doesn't matter. Just make sure that the width and height is the same as your composition and then press on to OK. Then I'm going to go to effects and presets and search for CC particle world. Drag it on top of the solid layer. And to make it a bit easier for you, I'm going to start by putting the birth rate from 2 down to 0.1. Then I'm going to open up the producer and change the radius X, Y and Z all to 1. What this will do is spread our particles more out and actually make them visible. And then for the physics tab, we're going to put the velocity from 1 up to 1.2. The animation we can leave as explosive. But very important, put the gravity from 0.5 down to 0. If we move a bit ahead with our time indicator, you can see these orange particles popping up right here. And this is exactly what we're creating right now. But obviously, to fit our outro, we don't really want them to be orange. We rather want them to be in a nice blue. So I'm going to open up the particle section. And in here, you can make loads of customizations to the actual particles that are flying around around themselves. All I'm gonna do is put the birth and death color from this McDonald's looking uh, yellow and red to a nice blue that fits the style of our animation. After we did that, you can see the particles look way more seamless. And just to make them fit with the rest of the edit, I'm also gonna add the deep glow once again to the solid layer as well like that. Just make sure you put the exposure down so they don't look too bright. The last thing I wanna do to my background is kind of make it a bit more blurry. That way later when we add the text, it will pop out a bit more. And because the outro's main focus is to show your name, that actually makes a lot of sense if you think about it. So head to the top, click on layer, new, and then select adjustment layer. Go to effects and presets and search for brightness and contrast again. Drag it on top of the adjustment layer and just change the brightness from zero down to negative 15. And for the blur, I like to use Gaussian blur. So I'm going to search for Gaussian blur, drag it on top of this adjustment layer and change the blurriness from zero to 10. Once we did that, the background is done and it already looks way better than before. But the key component is still missing because we want people to know who made the edit, which means next up, we got to add our text. For that, all we got to do is head to the top, click onto the text tool, then onto our 
our composition and type our name. In my case, it's RDYLT09. As you can see right now, it looks like it's been made on Goofy Air Cap Card. So I'm going to select all the letters, go to my character panel. And for the font, I'm going to select Meriwether. There's different types. I'm going to go for the bold one. Then the font size, I'm going to put down to 130. And the tracking, I'm going to leave at zero. Because we want our text to be in the middle of the screen, I'm also going to go to Align, click on to Align Horizontally, and then Align Vertically. Next, we're going to have to create the texture we want to use on top of our text. Because we don't just want to use a plain color, that way it will just look a bit cooler. And because we want to use this texture in our 3D text, we're actually going to have to apply it to a new solid layer. So go to the top, click on Layer, New, and then select Solid. Again, the color doesn't matter. Just make sure the resolution fits and press on to OK. It should be covering your entire screen. And then we're going to open up our effects and presets and search for the S underscore texture noise emboss effect. Drag it on top of the solid layer. And we're going to start by putting the frequency from 2 up to 3. Dog taste, we're going to put from 5 up to 7. And the bump scale, we're going to put from 2.5 up to 3. Now, the most important part is going to be changing the color. And because my entire outro is going to be in this light blue color, I, of course, want the text to fit as well. So I'm going to go to the section called light color click on it once and then select the bright blue that I want my text to be in. Once you found the right shade, we're going to press on OK. And now very important, we have to pre-compose this layer to be able to use it in our 3D text. Just right click on it, then go to pre-compose, select the bottom option and enable this check mark. Press on to OK. And then we can disable both the texture and our text as well because we're not going to need them anymore. To add our 3D text, again, we're going to make a new solid layer. Color doesn't matter, just make sure the resolution fits and then press on to OK. The effect we're going to use for our 3D text is called element. Again, if you cannot find it, join my Discord server and we're going to drag this on top of this new created solid layer. It will make the solid layer disappear and now we're going to have to tell our element effect which layers it should use for the 3D text. To make that a bit easier I'm going to select the texture we created earlier and rename it just from white solid layer to texture. That will help us select the right layer. The text can stay how it is and then we're going to re-click onto the solid layer we created for the element effect and open up the section that says custom layers. Instead of here go to custom texts and masks and for the path layer one instead of none select the text that has your water mark on it. Close the section and next we're going to open the custom texture maps. Instead of here for the layer one, we're now going to select our texture, which you can see we named texture. So that just makes it a bit easier. And then we can close the custom layers again and click on scene setup. Once that's done, you will be met with a whole new UI and using it is actually pretty simple. Just start off by clicking onto extrude, which actually will bring our text into this preview. We already had this kind of 3D look where you can see it kind of goes into depth, but we want it to look a bit cooler. So start off by selecting the extrusion model and putting the bevel copies from from one up to two. What that will let us do is open up the extrusion model and just select the bevel number two we just duplicated. For this specific bevel, increase the extrude to 1.5 and decrease the expand edges value. I'm gonna put it to negative 0.5. And as you can see in our preview, this will give us this kind of bubbly popping out effect where it looks like the text is actually popping out from the background. I really like that look, but obviously you can customize it to however you want. One last thing I'm gonna do is just slightly increase the Z offset, which will make it look a bit cleaner in between of these two layers. And now because our text still is a plain white, we're going to change the texture next. Make sure the bevel number two is selected and then scroll down in this panel until you find the texture section. And here we're going to click onto the diffuse. And from this arrow, we can select our white solid, which we pre-composed earlier. As you can see, it will automatically apply the texture to our text. We're going to click onto OK. And then we're going to do the same thing for the glossiness just to make it look less stale. Again, press on OK. And this texture already looks pretty, pretty nice. Only problem is that obviously the back of our text still has this plain white color. And I want this to be a bit more shiny. So I'm going to select the bevel number one. Again, I'm going to go to the texture section and for the diffuse, I'm going to select the exact same texture we used earlier. But this time I'm going to scroll down even further and the reflectivity I'm going to put from 0% up to 70%. As you can see, this will give us a little bit of a chromey glow. And once you're satisfied with your text, just press on to OK. And if you look in your main preview and After Effects, you can see the exact text now appeared inside of here. Right now, it still looks pretty boring. So let's add some effects. First effect I want to add is called Bevel Alpha. Just search for it and then drag it on top of the solid layer. Very important, not the text layer you have to drag it on top of the solid layer which has our element effect. Leave the settings how they are and then we're going to search for deep glow. Drag it on top of the same layer and put the exposure from 1 down to 0.4. Next I'm going to search for the S underscore race effect which again you can get from my discord server and I'm also going to drag it onto my solid layer which you can see will give us this kind of rays but I want them to be a bit longer so I'm going to go to the race length and put them from 0.25 all the way up to 1. The brightness I'm going to reduce from 3 down to 1.5 and the last effect we're going to add is called drop shadow just search for it, drag it on top of the solid layer again and start by putting the opacity from 50 up to 100%. The distance I'm going to put from 5 down to 0 and the softness from 0 to 500. Now I'm going to duplicate this effect once by selecting it and then pressing Ctrl and D. And for the second drop shadow, I'm going to put the softness from 500 down to 15 and the distance from 0 up to 10. Okay, now you can see our text already looks pretty fire. 
editor, but there's no animation. So it's just stiff in one place. And because we're not goofy our CapCut editors, we are obviously going to add an animation. And to create the animation for our text, it's very important that we scroll up to use the element effect because that way we can actually make it look three dimensional. The animation obviously is supposed to start at the beginning. So I'm going to move my time indicator all the way to the start. And then I'm going to open up the group one section instead of here, the particle look. And then under multi object, I'm going to enable the multi object. This will give us a massive drop down menu, but let's start at the very beginning. I'm going to start with the particle size. I'm going to set a keyframe and put it from 10 up to 30 because I want my text to zoom out when the outro starts. Then I'm also going to open up my particle replicator inside of here, the rotation and set a keyframe for the Z rotation. This I'm going to change to negative 30, which as you can see, tilts our text a bit to the left. Now scroll down and set a keyframe for the X rotation. Put this up to 25 so the text kind of tilts forward. Also set a keyframe for the random rotation and put it up to 50 so that our characters have this random twist. Next up, set a keyframe for the X displays and put it up from 0 to 0 0.5, which will make them spread out a bit more. And lastly, we're going to scroll down, open up the deform section and instead of the twist, we're going to set a keyframe for the twist X. Put this up to 30 as well and make sure you enable it by clicking this check mark. Now we set a lot of keyframes and to make the whole overview a bit easier, I'm just going to select my layer and press U once, which as you can see will limit the view to only the ones that we actually created. And now you have to pick when you want your outro animation to be over. For me, I like about two and a half seconds. So I'm going to go to two and a half seconds and here my text is going to be fully visible. What we're going to do at this point is just reset our values. So I'm going to start with the Z position. You can see we put that to negative 30. And at this point, we want it to be straight again. So I'm just going to reset this to zero. Very important for the particle size and some other values. You don't want to go to zero because if you put the particle size to zero, you can see our text will be invisible. So I'm going to put this to seven. This is about the size I want. You can obviously go a bit bigger if you want your text to be bigger. I think seven looks good. X rotation, I'm also going to put to zero. Random rotation, I like my characters to be a bit randomly aligned. So I'm going to leave this at 15. Displacement, I'm going to put to 0.1 because I want them to not be too close together. And the twist, of course, I'm also going to put down to zero. This is what our animation looks like now. And because we're not goofy at CapCut editors, we're going to change the graphs. For that, select all of your keyframes and press F9 on your keyboard. Start with the first one, open up the graph editor, right click and make sure the edit speed graph is selected. Then click onto this first point and just drag the yellow handle all the way to the left. And the same thing on the right side, drag the yellow handle all the way to the left until it looks like this. Select the second keyframes, open up the graph editor and copy the same graph. Just drag the left handle to the left and the right handle also all the way to the left. Close the graph editor and repeat this process for all of your animations. Once you applied this graph to all of your keyframes, your animation should already look way better because it's moving a lot faster at the beginning. But what's bothering me right now is that our text is moving and our background is staying very stiff. So you can see how our text is zooming out, but our background is just in the same position. And to fix that, we're going to add the same thing to our background as well. To do that, we're going to head to the top, click on layer, new, and then select null object. Now it's very important that you enable motion blur, which is this box right here for all of the layers that we have. Then we're going to select all of our layers and use this pick whip tool to drag them onto our null object. What that will do is link them together. So now every change that we make to our null object will be applied to all of our layers equally. Go to the beginning of your composition where your outro is supposed to start and press S on your keyboard while having the null selected and set a keyframe for the scaling. Then press R on your keyboard and also set a keyframe for the rotation. Press U to bring both of them up and we're going to start by just scaling in our background so we can actually create the zooming out animation. I'm going to go for 180% and then we'll also want it to rotate a bit more towards the left. So I'm going to put my rotation to negative 30. Then I'm going to move my time indicator to the end of this null object right here and reset these values. So the scaling to 100% and the rotation to 0% like it was before. Select both the keyframes. Again, press F9 to easy ease. Then select the top one first, which is the scaling. And we want to use the same graph we use for our text animation. So we're just going to select the first point, drag the handle all the way to the left and do the same thing on the other side, drag the handle all the way to the left. Close the graph editor and repeat this for your rotation as well. Once we created our text and background animation, it's the perfect time to add some personal touch. Some people like to add butterflies. Some people like to add their favorite character. What you do is up to you. I don't want to have an over edited outro, so I'm going to keep it simple and just add a normal line. Before we do that, though, if you want to increase the quality of your edits immensely, make sure you check out the first link in the description because I'm still running a huge sale in my shop. You can get my personal color corrections, texts and more for up to 70% cheaper. They are used by almost 8000 editors across the globe and 
due to your guys' amazing feedback, you can still save an extra 10% on the already ongoing 70% sale by using the code SUMMER10. So if you want to go viral and finally grow your account, check the first link in the description. For that, I'm going to go to the top, select the pen tool, and it's very important that you don't have any layer selected. The fill, I'm going to disable by clicking on it and selecting none. And for the stroke color, I'm going to select a blue that fits with my edit. The stroke width, I'm going to leave at 10 pixels for now, and then I'm going to zoom out and just start drawing a small path for the line where I want it to go. So I want it to kind of crawl over my screen like this in a nice little S curve. And to actually create the animation, I'm going to go to the beginning of my timeline right here, then head to add and select trim paths. This will open up the shape layer we created for our line. And then here we can open up the trim path one section and set a keyframe for the end right at the start and put the value from 100 down to 0% because at the beginning we don't want it to be visible. Then we can go ahead a few seconds. I'm going to go to about one and a half seconds and we can put this value from zero up to 100%, which you can see makes my line appear. I don't want the entire line to be visible at once. So I'm going to go a few frames after my line actually appears and set a keyframe for the start. Leave it at zero and then also go ahead one and a half seconds, which would be about here and set a second keyframe, but for 100%. What that will do is if you hover over your timeline now, you can see it's only limited to a small little stroke and not the entire line at once. To make it smoother, again, I'm going to select the keyframes and press F9. Then I'm going to go to the end of my timeline where my null object animation is done. And again, use the pig whip tool to bind this shape layer to our null object. If you look at it now, you can see it's also covering our text, which I don't like. So I'm just going to drag it underneath of our adjustment layer right here. So it also gets a little bit blurred. Lastly, I'm also going to add the deep glow effect to the shape layer, put the exposure to 0.1, and then of course, enable motion blur. We're almost done. The last steps are just going to be adding some final touches to make the whole thing look smoother and less stiff. For that, we're going to go to layer, new and select adjustment layer. Duplicate this four times by pressing Ctrl and D, one, two, three, four, and we should be left with a total of five adjustment layers. Move two seconds ahead and cut the bottom two adjustment layers right here by pressing Ctrl, Shift and D. Delete everything that comes past here. So now we should have two small adjustment layers and three long ones. Let's start at the bottom. We're going to go to the beginning and search for the effect called S underscore shake. Drag it on top of this bottom adjustment layer and set a keyframe for the amplitude. Put the value from one down to 0.5, then enable this check mark, which says motion blur. Press U on your keyboard, move to the end of the adjustment layer and set this value from 0.5 down to zero. We should be left with two keyframes, select both of them and then press F9. Open the graph editor and this time, instead of editing the speed graph, we're going to right click and select edit value graph. Select this top handle and drag it straight down like this, not all the way, just about 80%. And the one on the right, we're going to drag all the way to the left like this. Close the graph editor and for the second short adjustment layer, we're going to go to effects and presets and search for BBC ripple dissolve. Drag it on top of the second adjustment layer and instead of the settings, all we got to do is open the animation tuning, put the ease out from 0 up to 80 and the dissolve duration from 60 down to 30. This effect will give us these nice waves when we play ahead, which just overall makes it look more aesthetic. For the third and first long adjustment layer, we're going to go to effects and presets and search for S underscore time warp RGB. Drag it on top of the layer and what that will do is give us a nice little prisma effect. As you can see right here, it looks really, really cool and adds a lot of depth to the outro. Then for the fourth adjustment layer, search for the wiggle effect and apply the wiggle position and wiggle rotation on top of it. Instead of the settings, scroll up. We're going to start with the wiggle position and put the wiggle amount in pixels from 50 down to 15. The speed we're going to put from 1 down to 0.7 and then we're going to scroll down to change the rotation as well. The amount we're going to put from 30 down to 2 and the speed again from 1 to 0.7. And in the places where our animation is over, like right here where the text is not moving anymore, it will add some overall movement to make it look less stiff. For the last and final adjustment layer, we're going to search for S underscore flicker and then drag it on top. For the amplitude, go for 0.1 and the frequency we're going to put down to 5. Once that's done, the last step is going to be exporting the outro so we can actually use it in our edits. And listen up because the settings you use here are very crucial, especially to keep the outro's quality. First of all, we obviously want to make sure we only render our outro. So I'm going to go to the end where I want my outro to be finished and press N on my keyboard. And now when we render, it will only export the section that we marked. Head to the top, click on composition and then click on add to render queue. Inside of here for the output module, instead of H.264, we're going to click on it. And for the format, select QuickTime. Open the format options and for the video codec, we're going to select Apple ProRes 422. Press on to OK and then press on to OK. The output you can set to wherever you want your outro to be saved. I'm going to put it to my desktop and then just give it the name outro. Click on to save, in my case, Speichern. And finally, click on render. This might take a while depending on how fast your PC works. And if you're still confused and want to learn editing on a more professional level, make sure you check the second link in the description to my school community, where you can get the project file of this outro and all my other edits. On top of that, you get hour long unfiltered After Effects courses and three weekly live calls where you can ask me any question you like about After Effects. There's still a limited time offer if you join now, so check out the second link in the description.
the description. Enough yapping. If this video helped you, make sure you like and subscribe. It would really make my day. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.